Hello! Today, new format on my channel. Uh, in between the episodes where I will keep on uh, dis dissecting my own computers for your viewing pleasure, I am going to speak uh, about uh, some uh, computing oddities that are of historical significance and just uh, let's just do it now and begin with Soviet computing. Uh, what's amazing in Soviet computing is that for a very brief period of time uh, between 1950 and 1970 uh, the Soviets were actually leading uh, the computing uh, run and nobody in the West knew about it. I didn't you tell the world, eh? This was uh, the produce of one man who was uh, named Sergei Lebedev. And Sergei Lebedev uh, was an academician and an engineer who had heard about computers at the end of uh, the Second World War, uh, became interested in the concept of automated uh, calculation, and he recreated from scratch, without any Western input, uh, the von Neumann uh, principles of operation for computers, that is, uh, a program stored in the same memory as uh, the data, which was in itself a fantastic feat of uh, intelligence. And he went on applying his uh, principles uh, to uh, small uh, electronical computers made up of about uh, 5,000 uh, electronical tubes or valves, uh, however you prefer to call them. And the MESM uh, was uh, very successful. It ran uh, at uh, 3 kilohertz, I think. It was a limited machine, but a machine that proved invaluable uh, for the Russians as they were beginning to study uh, the atom in uh, the process of creating their first uh, atomic bomb. The necessity of uh, automated calculation um, became clear and uh, there was a very important political uh, backing behind uh, computing that uh, came to be at that time. Uh, also, it was uh, for political reason not uh, <laughs> Lebedev who reaped the, um, the fruit, the benefits of uh, his invention. Uh, it was uh, Department of uh, Ministries that was more tied uh, to the military that uh, went on building another computer that was called the Strela but was of inferior quality to Lebedev design. And uh, well, when everything uh, finally settled down, uh, Lebedev uh, was uh, building uh, another computer that was uh, BESM. And the BESM, uh, also a prototype uh, that was not running at the intended speed because of uh, some uh, material shortage, uh, was uh, successful enough so it was refined into uh, another computer that was called the BESM2. The BESM2 had a limited uh, production run of uh, 10 or 20 machines built. Um, its claim to fame was uh, to be able to compute uh, the orbital characteristic of the Apollo missions uh, in under a minute when the NASA had to wait in America 30 minutes to know if the orbital parameters of the Apollo mission uh, were right. So the Russians were uh, were laughing their ass off while the Americans were still uh, in the process of uh, calculating if they were on the right track uh, just to show the gap between uh, the Soviet computing and the American computing at the same time because in the West we were taught that uh, for the most part uh, Soviet computing was of inferior quality 
and uh, for the most part a copy of the Western computing. It's absolutely wrong. So the BSM2 was uh, quite su successful and uh, it was uh, declined into uh, or, or refined into smaller or uh, more reliable machines for instance uh, Lebedev uh, uh, junior engineers uh, went on building the BSM3 and 4 BSM4 was uh, the first transistorized uh, machine and it was uh, basically a BSM2 uh, tad bit faster but well, not that much. Well, it was basically the same design. The claim to fame of the BASM4 was, for instance, uh, to be the first machine uh, to produce uh, some CGI uh, imagery. Uh, I will uh, put uh, a small uh, a small trailer of uh, of what they did with it. Uh, it was funny because the images were created on the computer but they were printed on paper and uh, animated in stop motion but they were computed that's the interesting part they were it was not uh, playing a, a script it was uh, following a mass mathematical formula um, so uh, Lebedev uh, was not interested in uh, redoing over and over the same design so he had bigger plans and uh, he was at the same time creating what can be certainly called the pinnacle of Soviet computing which is the BESM6. The BESM6 was fully transistorized, it was the first computer that was um, where each component was uh, described in mathematical terms. Uh, it was running at 10 MHz it had a word size of uh, 48 bits, uh, which was very, very impressive. It was a mathematical computer. It had no provision to use uh, character strings and it was only able to work on words. And the most interesting part of the BSM6 design was that it was already a super scholar what we call now a superscalar computer. It had a pipeline for instruction when, where it could uh, process uh, a certain number of instructions in parallel. And this uh, concept was uh, a first in, uh, for, for Russia and it had a very very long legacy because it went on to be implemented in the BASM6 successor, which was the uh, Elbrus. And one of the engineers working on the Elbrus, Mr. Penkovsky, uh, became a, a US citizen in the 90s and went on to become a senior engineer at Intel at the time the Pentium was created. Penkovsky, Pentium, well, who knows, maybe there is a connection, but what is certain is that the Pentium Pro processor had a superscalar design that was a one-for-one -one match to the BSM6 design. So, at least there was an extraordinary inspiration that flooded from the BSM6 into uh, Intel. The story is uh, about complete and uh, we are now in 1967 and uh, the BASM6 was a very successful machine. It was mass produced. For Big Iron it had a run of uh, 350 machines built. There is one surviving machine that is now hosted after being dismantled in Russia. Uh, now hosted at uh, Science Museum in uh, London. Uh, so it was a very important machine. It had not a nice task because for the most part uh, it was put to military use uh, to help building more powerful atomic weapons and to help uh, um, computing uh, missiles uh, and rocketry tra trajectories. So it, after the BASM-6 there was no more that impulse to be leading the race in uh, computing power for Russia and the finance were not good for the, the country. 
So there was a, a change of policy uh, where uh, Russians were um, not creating their own designs anymore. They went on uh, copying Western design and after the 70s uh, they slowly uh, let uh, their lead uh, in computing uh, die and they simply uh, became uh, copiers of uh, Western technologies beginning with uh, IBM uh, 360 line of computers and 370 uh, for the big rounds they copied uh, the VAX and they copied uh, the home computers but they were never at the, at the lead of the computing race after 1970. So it's of uh, less obvious historical interest also for collectors. There are many home machines that are very collectible. Uh, clones of uh, Sinclair ZX Spectrums and clones of Apple IIs and uh, things like that. Uh, I will be putting uh, some uh, diagram and pictures and some links uh, below on my research on this subject so if you're interested you can uh, dig deeper and learn about Sergei Lebedev and uh, his uh, is tremendous uh, contribution to uh, computing history. So this is uh, the end of uh, this uh, first issue uh, dedicated to computing history. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will be interested to uh, uh, to read further about uh, that subject uh, in the links below. If you liked it, uh, please uh, <laughs> sum up. If you didn't like it for any reason, please tell me so I, so I can improve uh, my channel continuously. And in the meantime, before my next video, bye bye, have a great time.